Hey everybody, this is Joe Joseph and this is the DailySheeple.com's news shot. <clears throat> you know, China has really made some smart moves. They made some epically stupid moves, if you ask me, but on the flip side, there's some epically smart moves as well that they've made to position themselves to really take over power from the West. And I think we're seeing that transition now as you might see a little bit of a kind of the death throes, if you will, with Trump, where we see a little bit of activity. But <clears throat> I guarantee you that if China continues the way that they're going, um, they certainly will take over a lot of the dominance that the United States once had. It's very similar to the way that Great Britain ceded its dominance to the United States when the British pound sterling was the world reserve currency. So the Independent's reporting that China's now getting its power from the largest solar farm on Earth. And if you see this solar farm, and you see this in the picture here, it's an unbelievably huge solar farm. <clears throat> and it floats at that. It's out on the water where it's unobstructed. It's a perfect location, you know, and it's always getting sun. So it's a very innovative idea. Something that, <clears throat> you know, here in the United States, if we weren't so fixated on tourism and everything like that, you know, you could actually have, you know, some of this stuff dedicated to solar farms. And instead of it taking up the landscape, you just put it out on the ocean. I mean, you can still have your beaches. You just put it out there a little ways. Oh, it's very interesting. Listen to this. China, one of the most polluted countries in the world. Um, and it's not getting any better, by the way, folks. It's getting a lot worse. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at some pictures of Beijing, the, the smog is just unbelievable. And I remember back in the 70s and 80s of the talk, and even if you looked at pictures of Los Angeles, even today with our emission standards, Los Angeles can oftentimes get smoggy, very smoggy. And it's because of that smog that you have uh, huge flare-ups and asthma and other ailments where people actually die. You know, um, my good friend Popeye over at federaljack.com, his uh, wife died from asthma. You know, a lot of people don't think about asthma being a killer. It's a killer, especially now with the fact that they've replaced the propellant and say the albuterol inhalers with this <clears throat> hydrofluorocarbon free uh type of propellant that just doesn't get it into your lungs and anybody that has asthma that that suffers it and has had to transition from their regular inhaler over to these HFA inhalers no it just doesn't work like it used to and so this is a big problem well China's trying to tackle it head on remember China owns 90% of the rare earth element mines in the world 90% solar panels like other electronic components are made of rare earth elements. So because they, A, own the majority of these mines throughout the world, B, because their environmental regulations are nowhere near what the United States are. So when they process these rare earth elements, they don't care about the pollution that it generates, at least not as much as, say, the United States or other Western nations. And so because of that, they're able to process these rare earth elements at an extremely low cost relative to what the United States pays, not just because the United States is having to pay China for most of the rare earth elements, but also when it comes to processing it, it comes at a cost if you're going to do it here. So that's why we normally get our solar panels and all that equipment from overseas, from China, because it's cheaper to manufacture there. Well, likewise, it costs... China a fraction of what it cost us here in the United States to utilize solar power. And now they're becoming a leader in renewable energy. And think about this. If you're China and you know the world is tied to the petrodollar and you know the United States' well-being depends on the, the dollar being the world reserve currency, but more so that oil is traded on the world market for. Now, if China goes and says they go nuclear, literally, and but not in a nuclear way, they do it in a solar way, in a renewable energy way to where all of a sudden 
the demand for oil starts to drop like a rock. And this is going to happen, folks. Mark my word. As the United States transitions over to more renewable energy, like solar, I'm not going to say wind just yet because wind is very inefficient and they haven't quite got the grip on, on the whole wind thing yet. Yes, these wind farms are out there, but I don't think they've really perfected that yet. But the solar energy, the solar panels, they most certainly have. SunGrow Power Supply is the company that created the 40 megawatt power plant, solar power plant. And that's what sits on the flooded former coal mining town in China's eastern Anhui province. 40 megawatt. Unbelievable amount of power. As we transition, the price of oil is going to drop like a rock. Consequently, you're going to see a lot of these economies that have depended on oil to start to drop. Your Venezuela has already done it. Um, Brazil is in a big way, uh, hurting in a big way because of this problem with oil. All your BRICS nations, basically. Then you have the United States, right? Which is heavy on the fracking side of things. But your fracking, you still got to make about $40 a barrel if fracking is going to stay in operation, which, <laughs> honestly, you, you don't want that to happen. You want fracking to go away. And I know a lot of people out there may have jobs in the oil industry tied to fracking. It's one of those necessary things. It's as necessary as, say, evolving the idea of how we educate our children. Because now you don't need brick and mortar schools. You know, now we have the internet. Now you can let kids go self-paced and learn. All that stuff is out there for them. You don't need these central locations to aggregate people because the material just wasn't available then unless you went to an, an aggregation point. And now that's not needed. So how do we evolve as a society to do away with fossil fuels or what they call fossil fuels, but oil? to do away with these archaic yet established way of doing things so that we can actually take humanity to the next level. It's not going to come without some growing pains, that's for sure. I'm Joe Joseph. This was TheDailySheeple.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at TheDailySheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody.